go. Thursday, April 27th, 2023. Staying alive. Staying alive. Dan Greider, probable cause. This is expert opinion number three coming up right now. This is David St. George, my good friend, David St. George. He's the national director of SAFE. Huge organization, has 12,000 CFIs. Dave and I have uh, batted heads and, and gone bruised knuckles over the years over lots of different topics. He's a great friend and a great guy. His Zoom call interview is about to happen. I'm about to set up the thing and push record. Whatever happens, happens. David St. George has agreed to go on camera. Let me talk through him. I got a standard set of questions I'm going to ask him. He knows it's coming, and I think he wants to talk about this. It's going to be totally awesome. Uh, for you guys wanting to stay alive out there, this is the National Director of SAFE, and I want to get his opinion on AQP, and I want you to listen for these terms uh, that I'm going to bring up in here. Conditioning versus training. Conditioning versus training. It's going to come up in this interview that's about to happen. Here we go. This is David St. George, AQP Scenarios, Expert Opinion Number 3. Here today with my expert friend, expert opinion, David St. George. David, I sure appreciate you stopping in here to visit with me. Pleasure to see you again. And uh, I think there's a lot of people really uh, curious about what David St. George has to say on this important topic. Welcome. Welcome, Dan. Uh, thank you very much for having me. You know, I, I thank you for putting this right out front. It's a very important topic. I appreciate it. So tell me, you're, uh, you're a pretty experienced pilot. You're an examiner. You're a jet pilot. And you're also the uh, director of SAFE. Tell me about SAFE and what your organization does. And who who is SAFE, the organization? Who is that for? Yeah, SAFE uh, Society of Aviation Flight Educators. It's on the internet, safepilots.org. So anybody with a pilot certificate can join and you get a third off for flight. But our major focus is uh, flight instructors and improving the quality and professionalism. Because we feel if you reach the flight instructor and you improve them, you raise all boats, you know, and each flight instructor is going to reach 50 uh, pilots a, a month. Who knows? Uh, and that's uh, that's our objective, improving pilots. Exactly. And uh, your organization is very large, very powerful. You've got a good reach in the CFI community. And that's how come I really think in spite of our differences and the coffee incident, we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah. Dan Greider's Dan Greider, right? We, you said that. You, I said you're it. A, you're a, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it's great to meet. Um, but, you know, as far as this goes, aviation safety, we have no differences. We're 100 percent on the same message. Exactly. And I and I appreciate that. I, and I'm, I'm glad to show that you and I have been friends for a long time. We're still friends. We may have a few little differences here and there, but you and I are really on the same mission. We're just viewing it a little bit different way. And I'd like to get your take on this. So I want to jump right into it. AQP is a philosophy is something that the airlines came up with. I didn't invent it. I don't own it. And I am i don't have it for sale. It's just like CRM. CRM came around years ago and everybody fought it. Even the airlines fought it. And now today, CRM is well accepted. It's well used. And it's trickled down into, G, into GA flying. Tell me about CRM and SRM in the checkride world and in the single pilot jet world. How does, how does CRM um, apply to you? Well, obviously, you know, especially when you step up to a two-person crew, it's very critical to have good communications, use all your resources to create safety. And, you know, in a two-person crew, we have a lot more um, capability, resources. And one of the one of the programs I travel, Dan, is talking to GA pilots about the difference. When you're a single pilot in a little plane, um, with fewer resources, you know, SRM, you're it. And the person in the other seat might be your spouse, might be your family. So using resources, um, as many as you have is critical, but you know, you really do have a more risky environment. You're using a smaller plane, single engine, your VFR, instead of going to 50 airfields like the airlines, you're going to 5,000 airfields, you're landing in grass, you're landing in water, you know, yep. GA is a wonderful privilege, but you really have to manage the risk because there's a lot more of them. 
And all of those little things, you know, like you do in the uh, AQP program, you know, rejected takeoff, say a deer goes running across a runway. That's not going to usually happen at Kennedy, but it's sure going to happen at the grass field. So yeah. you got to be tuned up and ready for risk. Um, so CRM is a really critical, important thing. What we were discussing earlier, you know, I'm a pilot examiner and have been for 25 years. And obviously we used the PTS years ago. Uh, SAFE in 2011 had a meeting in Atlanta and we pushed the, um, the scenario based training and we got risk management added to the ACS. But people forget that the ACS is just a testing standard. Um, as we were mentioning before the program, CFIs have to understand that they have to train more than the ACS. They got to train those crosswind landings. They've got to train the rejected takeoffs. Those should be added, but they're not in the ACS. And exactly. once training is done, you know, we've got to we've got to learn more. Um, exactly. And the, the point I was trying to make here that uh, you you touched on and, and, and glazed over that I'd like to recircle to CRM and SRM is, is very important, but look at the opposition that it first received when it was rolled out. Right. Yeah. Nobody, nobody wanted CRM and it was fought uh, even in GA, the feds, the feds were opposed to the idea of, of, of big airline CRM stuff in a 172 cockpit. And it took a long time to get feds to warm up to, Hey, maybe this is a good idea. So I'm paralleling that now back to AQP Maybe we should call AQP by a different name. You call it the killers. I really don't care what we call it, but let's talk about the difference that you see as a pilot, a jet pilot, as an examiner, the ACS maneuvers that you use to get your pilot's license versus the AQP killer scenarios that happen to you after your piece of plastic is in your pocket. Talk about that. Well, yeah, there's a couple of points there you touched on that are critical. One is that when you have an ACS and when you have an evaluation uh, scenario, when we're doing an evaluation as a DPE, you have to remember it's a 70% pass is, you know, you get a 70% you pass. It's a pass fail. So when you get that piece of plastic to start with, there may be one third that you don't even, you know, that you weren't good at. You know, it's you have to reach an acceptable level on all the maneuvers. But 70 percent, you know, you are a pilot, just like the guy that's last in medical school. Right. So that's the first point. Uh, second thing is um, there's not a big emphasis. I mean, we're not trying to make it the hardest test in the world or no one would pass it. So there's many things that are there that aren't going to be covered in detail. And like we mentioned in a pre-brief here, uh, crosswind landings are nowhere in the ACS. So self-fueling at a self-fuel pump, tying down a plane, there's so many things that aren't covered that have to be covered after you get that license to learn. So that only comes with the flight reviews. When you visit with another flight, with a flight instructor after the evaluation, it should be more than a lunch date. It really has to be a learning, growing experience. And it really has to be focused on the things that kill pilots. As we were mentioning, you know, it's a very sobering uh, experience to go to an accident site and see what can happen. You have to remember that it's not all fun. There's, you know, once you're in the air, gravity works 24 <laughs> seven, all day, all night, gravity's gonna bring you down. So we really have to be tuned up as pilots. And it's yeah. incumbent upon the CFI to teach that. Sorry and that. it's incumbent upon the pilot to have the incentive to want to stay alive, to to take the extra measure to take available the resources that are out there to, to self-educate on what is it that's going to happen to me after the feds give me my little piece of plastic. Now, I got the plastic. What are the things that are probably going to sucker punch me in the gut? What are they? And I'm going to read this thing off the screen here. You actually wrote this, and I really like it. Uh, and I'll show it on the screen here um, for other people to see here. But it says, flight reviews mostly fail in their job of providing ongoing safety because CFIs refer back to the ACS, which is known territory. But really... The ACS is what you're saying here, but really a training and testing document. The ACS was not designed for pilot proficiency. In the flight review, we need to address what is harming already certificated pilots as they fly every day, colon, the, the killers. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's and as you know, I mean, there's things we can't test. There's things we can't train. The one advantage in the big iron is you get into a simulator and they're going to fail that engine just as you rotate, you know. Um, we can't safely train everything, but we certainly can train rejected takeoffs. We can turn, you know, like you were doing with Steve there, uh, flight chops, the initial power failure nose down. Right. These have to be built into a pilot with repetitive training frequently, right. or it's not going to happen. And right. we, we talk a lot about startle, and all startle means is you're in uncomfortable, strange territory where you revert to that sort of mammalian you know, right. fight or flight, and you don't react correctly. And right. every pilot, unfortunately, has built into them, I see the ground and I pull. And it's exactly backwards from what we should be doing. But, you know, if we're not trained and we're not current, that's what's going to happen. Yep. You know, I'm interviewing tomorrow, live in person, a Cessna 150 pilot who took off from PDK on April 20, just a few days ago, had an engine failure at 400 feet, attempted the impossible turn, and he did make it back to the opposite runway, parallel runways. He made it back to 2-1 right. But this morning, talking to him on the phone, he told me he doesn't remember the turn. He remembers the engine rolling back, but he has 15 or 20 seconds of memory that are not available. He can't remember. There's a big black fuzz in there. During the time of crisis, your brain kind of checks out. That's the, that's the startle there. Yes, it is. And you're exactly right. The cognitive prefrontal cortex goes away and we're just reacting. You sink to the level of your training and that training has to be there if you want to end up successfully talking to Dan Greider the next day. <laughs> exactly. In fact, uh, I wouldn't even call it training. I call that conditioning. I'm, I'm going to condition yeah. you like Pavlov's dog. Not only do you have not time to think, your brain is a 286 computer on the very best of days. You're not going to think through this. You have to react. You have to be conditioned to react. And that's where ACS is maneuvers. And there's no surprise in the ACS. No one is ever surprised when David St. George says, all right, I'd like for you to do the steep turn. Well, that's not a surprise. We knew the steep turn was coming and we're up high and it doesn't raise your blood pressure. The ACS is maneuvers in their void of the element of startle and surprise. AQP is scenarios and they're chucked full of startle, surprise, panic, and fear. And your brain is going to check out. You're going to lose memory and you're going to, you're going to reflex in ways that you, you would have swore that you never did. You mean I raised the nose? Yes, you did. Absolutely, you did. There was no one else there. You did it. So the clear distinction between ACS maneuvers and AQP scenarios is absolutely huge. And I wish, uh, uh, you know, the the value of this video that um, I'm doing this series here, expert opinions. Your your opinion that I'm going to get to it here in just a second is is very valuable, and it's for free. It's on YouTube. I don't charge any money. Nobody charges any money. Anybody can watch this video and, and get a little takeaway. Well, maybe I should review a little bit and do a little bit further study on what I would do in each one of these scenarios is really the whole direction that I'm trying to go with this. Yeah, and you're exactly right. I mean, if you look at the VG diagram, which I know is a little technical, but everyone's seen that stall speed the uh you know and the limitations an average pilot flies in about seven to eleven percent of that flight envelope in right. normal flight in other words we fly in our comfort zone and unless you get pushed out of that comfort zone everything outside that comfort zone is going to be startled we have yep. a program at safe that's called extended envelope and we took it from the airlines uh 121 i think it's 423 they yep. added that part the extended envelope training for for airlines and we said that's a great idea for ga pilots let's do more turning stalls let's do ballistic recovery stalls let's do falling leaf and after about 3 hours of that people come back and they're so much more confident and if they get pushed into that corner by awake turbulence or something, they're not going to be uncomfortable and startled. They're going to react correctly and fly comfortably. Yes. You only get startled if you're put into that dark corner where you haven't been. So that is the value of training and, as you say, conditioning. You are yes. automatically going to react properly. Yes. So in summary, the ACS and getting your pilot is training AQP after your pilot certificate is conditioning. 
I'm conditioning That's... for each one of the scenarios that is probably going to happen to you. In fact, I guarantee you, if you have a pilot's license and you fly more than a year, you're going to get handed one of these. I guarantee it. Which one on which day? We don't know, but you're going to get one of them. And I hope that you're conditioned to respond properly and instantly so you can go home and eat dinner. That's all it is. Right. And I, you know, I, Rod Machado once did a tape and he said, what you have to remember as a pilot is there's things that are more important than accomplishing the mission, you know, and all of these things in flying. It's like coming home and living your life. There's something that really sucks about being in a hospital bed with tubes in you, you know, if, and that would be a good outcome. That would be, you know, we want to come back. Yeah. You've seen too many of these, Dan, but I mean, we all want to remember that we live in what's called a very high consequence environment as pilots. Yes. Bad things happen to people and they happen regularly. And as we said, you know, when we've been talking, it's not like we're inventing new ways to do this. They're very predictable. So They're very, very and, predictable. Uh, the, way, the ways we have of killing ourselves, I haven't seen any good creative ones lately. They're all they're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love when somebody's in the desert and a snake or something comes out of the dashboard. I go, now that's a new one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but very few. Very rarely. But uh, anyway, I'm going to zoom through a couple questions now that we've had this. And uh, you just give me your answer the be best you can here on uh, what you think here. But number one, um, what? tell me, what is the difference between FAA maneuvers and AQP scenarios? Well, we've, we've beat that one up a little, you know, and I, when I do a flight test, I, I calm down the applicant because they're always so nervous. I said, we're going to do exactly what you did with your flight instructor. You already did it with your instructor. You demonstrated proficiency. We're going to do it in the flight test for the FAA and you're a pilot. So there's not surprise. They're regular scripted maneuvers and they're not creative. And what AQP or the killers are things that are going to surprise you, um, it's very difficult as a pilot to surprise yourself. So that's why you need a really good CFI that's creative. And I can tell you one of the things I do with solo students before they even solo is when they're in a Cessna and they're taking off. This is a little evil, Dan, but you'll, 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 you'll agree with me. You put your foot up on the bar, that little bar underneath the yoke, you know, yep. under the panel yep. and they're pulling the rotate and the, and the yoke won't move. And they look yep. over to see if your hands are on the yoke. And I say, yep. Nope. And do they bring the power back? No, they don't bring the back. They keep pulling harder and you go, what are you thinking? You know, it's, yeah. it's amazing. So, you know, some of these can even be exposed, you know, a student during training. And I think it's valuable. Absolutely. You know, you don't have to, as an instructor, just do the ACS maneuvers, train crosswinds, train rejected takeoffs in the primary training. It'll get them ready for that AQP kind of exposure that comes later. Exactly. Yeah, I used to sorry little, to go on and on. No, you're good. I used to have a little uh, piece of leather with a little tiny piece of wood attached to the end of it and taxiing out with the student that I was getting ready to solo. I'd put it out my right door. So it was just hanging down there. And at about 40 knots, it would start beating against the side of the airplane, like a seatbelt outside. It would make yep. a huge noise and it always startled them and they were getting ready to rotate, but they didn't know what that noise was. My question was, are you going to stop or are you going to go? Obviously, this is a loud noise and it's not normal. Are you really going to fly with this? Are you? Yeah. And then after they see it, then they go, oh, well, yeah, that was dumb of me to, to continue the takeoff with that thing beating like a, a machine gun out there. What What is causing that? So those are kind of scenarios that you can get creative uh, safely and give somebody some kind of something to make them think about. Here's my next question for you. The This is number two. Is it possible to adopt the AQP scenario philosophy that 135 and 121 operators use and apply it to small airplanes? We've already kind of beat this up too, but is it possible, is it legal for us to go think outside the box here and use the 121 AQP philosophy to help our GA guys? I think it's not only uh, possible, but it's appropriate and required. I mean, AQP was developed as a, a sort of a, a, a alternate method of complying with regulations. But on a flight review, you know, we have complete carte blanche as CFIs. We yes. really are. I mean, we shouldn't be reviewing steep turns and, and things that are comfortable for people. We should be putting them in corners and 
testing that ability to react correctly to emergencies and startle. I mean, there's been a huge focus on that. Uh, GAJSC, the, the Joint Steering Committee, has a whole series on things like, uh, you know, rejected takeoffs. I think it's, you know, finally coming around that they're looking at accident data and they're saying, ah, that's where we should be looking. So, yeah. you know, the whole world's going that way. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I think it would help us a lot. And when I do a flight review, which I, I still conduct a lot of them, I beat people up. I don't train them. I condition them. I give them the same scenario so many times that they don't have a choice to think about it. They know what Dan's going to do. I, You know how bad I am. I beat them. I beat them into submission. I condition their poor little brain so they don't they don't <laughs> have a chance to do the wrong thing anymore. They'll never do they'll never do it the wrong way because they they know how but, bad hey we're you're saving lives though. That's the important thing, you know. And people should understand this when they go to get a flight review. I mean, it's the wrong thing to shop for an easy lunch date flight review. You should be looking for good training that's going to make you safer and a better pilot. You should be looking So I'm for sorry, but it requires some work. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. My next one. Um in your opinion, are today's G? This is the same questions I give to everybody. So I, I know we've covered some of this. In your opinion, are today's GA pilots more commonly killed by ACS maneuvers or by AQP scenarios? That's easy one. Yeah, we. Yeah, that's why we call them the killers or yeah. AQP. You know. Yeah, that's... you know what? I like that name. Uh, we've already covered this too as well. We'll just in review here. Uh, what is, in your definition, what is the startle factor, and how does AQP philosophy reduce its effect on GA accidents? Well, you covered that quite well. By the time you've you've gone through that conditioning, you know, lower the nose or whatever it is, and or reduce the throttle on a rejected takeoff, people should react correctly and save their lives. And uh, you, we've all, as instructors, gone back and had a student say, "I heard your voice in my head," you know, yes. that kind of thing. So, I mean, yes. that's what we're trying to do as educators: is implant that script that operates correctly when the startle happens. The script keeps running and saves the pilot. So yeah, well, you you remember uh, highly dogs, useful. You remember the dogs I used to have. Uh, my father's name was Pavlov, and, and Pavlov's dogs. That was my dad. We did that. You remember the experiment we did with Pavlov's dogs? That that was me. I, no, I'm kidding. You. <laughs> Pavlov's dogs got conditioned to salivate at the sound of the bell. It's 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 conditioning is all it is, and we can definitely do that. Is there any downside? of pilots and CFI studying AQP scenarios and training for these, even though it's not required by the FAA, any downside that you can think of? Um, no, you know, I, I don't think so. I, I couldn't imagine, but you know what I would also say is as a CFI, as an instructor, you I mean, there's, there's even these, there's more like you were saying with the seatbelt out the door type thing. Um, you have to be kind of creative. The problem, I think, with a lot of flight reviews is CFIs are trained ourselves to use the ACS. We have to get away from that and use a different syllabus when we're talking about flight reviews. We have to really look at the killers and, and you know, it it's it's a life saving thing that we have to do because pilots hit the ground. It would it would help me out a lot if I didn't have to travel to so many places and look at bent metal and blood on the ground if we started taking a little more effort to stay alive in our airplanes would be a lot easier on me. It, it's killing me getting out here. I, I I can't go to all these places all the time. I mean, it's, it's amazing. How about well, this? Yeah. Is, is a flight review conducted once every two years on the basis of an FAA ACS maneuvers sufficient for the average GA pilot? No, <laughs> no, I think, you know, and I, I think we exchanged an email on this, you know, an airplane every year is going to get an annual. It's going to take two or three days, very yes. extensive investigation of that plane, every part and piece, yep. and a, you know, and a pilot every two years gets an hour of ground, an hour of flight. That's very insufficient, yep. but it's a minimum. And I would emphasize everything the FAA writes and regulations are minimums. One hour I'm sorry, one mile clear of clouds, you know, the G, class G. I mean, who's going to do that? That's a minimum. That's not a safe thing. So we pick our own level. And I would highly encourage people, you know, to get, if you're just certificated, I hope you're part of the WINGS program, but get with a flight instructor six months after that first test. And then a year after that, at a minimum, get with a flight instructor because you're going to learn so much more. You can vary the person you're training with, you know, get Dan Greider to beat you up for a little while. You'll you'll get religion, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, well, I'm I'm kind of bad about that, as you know. Uh, here's this uh, uh, last one. Do you, as an examiner, endorse the concept of voluntary? I think I already know the answer to this one. Do you, as an examiner, David St. George, do you endorse the concept of voluntary GAAQP or whatever you want to call it? Insert your proper name in there. Additional scenario-based training for GA pilots conducted more than once every every two years. We we pretty well beat that up as well. But absolutely, yeah. No, we're in agreement, and you know it's a mission. All of us, you know, we don't we we all agree on safety, and and the way to get there is more recurrent, solid training, um, you know, and training out of your comfort zone, and and that is hard for pilots. It means you have to go the extra mile, but you have to think in terms of what's the value of your life, what's the value of the people you love, and you know, if you die, you're going to leave a huge hole in their lives. So. Yes. Let's stop this crazy stuff and and think more carefully about what we're doing. And training is the heart of that. So, yeah, I highly encourage that uh, training the killers, please. Yeah, there, there's no do-overs. You make a smoking hole in the ground, and I cannot put you back together again. It's going to destroy your family. It's going to destroy your life. Uh, the news media will forget about it in three days. Your family will never forget it. And all over something stupid that was so preventable. Uh, and even if you don't want to take additional training, just the resources that are available online, not me, all over the place on scenarios and what you can read about, YouTube videos, YouTube, the how-to of how not to get killed in your airplane. They're all over the place now on, on what this guy did in his airplane. Don't do not do that. Don't do that in your airplane. It's it's not good. Don't use better decision making. And the whole thing, the whole theme of AQP at the 121 world, where I was an instructor and an examiner, is prevention. We want to prevent our airline or even getting close to this scenario. We want to recognize what's about to happen to us and get us out of it before we have to use recovery techniques. We we want to prevent it from unfolding in the first place. Because AQP is a prevention-based philosophy and that's all it is there's no reason that us ga guys can't help our fellow brothers and sisters stay alive out there i, I agree go after it thank you dan thank you brother do you hear do you hear the music can you hear do you hear any can, do you hear any music it's not on my side no, i hear i hear music in my head all the time so i'm i'm hearing it i'm i'm hoping that you and other other people start to hear the same drum beat the same music the same theme that i'm relentlessly beating on this thing and i do appreciate you. <laughs> you're, you're gonna hear the music eventually because it's because it ain't gonna gonna quit and david i appreciate you very much jumping in on this zoom call your your opinion is very valued and i think a lot of other people would be be thrilled to see what david st george has to say about this philosophy and i thank you sir Thank you, Dan, for all you do. Thanks for your push towards safety. Be well. Yes, sir. So I hope you enjoyed that. I appreciate David jumping in here. It was a great Zoom call and uh, totally awesome. And uh, these, uh, if you would like to be an expert opinion on one of these Zoom calls with me, I'd love to have you. I'd love, love to talk through and ask you the same set of questions. Tell me your opinion on training versus conditioning. ACS versus AQP, surprise versus no surprise. I'd like to get your opinion. If you're willing to go on camera and Zoom call with me, I'd love to publish it. And uh, I'm going to keep on going on these series and keep on numbering them as we go. Sometimes my numbering system is not super accurate, but you know I'm trying. i got to get out here and get this uh, video and up and on the air for my tiny little itty-bitty fledgling YouTube channel, Dan Grider. Probable cause.